Hey Kingdom Culture family, so great to see you. Happy Sunday. Thank you for stopping by, being a part of our experience today. If you're new with us, welcome. If you've been with us consistently, welcome. So good to see you. Make sure you engage in the chat. And thank you to the worship team. Thank you so much. Every week you bring something so powerful to the table, giving the community an opportunity to engage in worship through music. So thank you to the worship team. Listen, I want to encourage you again to join us today in communion. Last week we did communion, and as you know, we are in a 21-day, everyday communion moment. And so I would encourage you to take part in that, but today specifically, if you can, get out the your elements, your blood, your grape juice, your wine, uh, and the body, the cracker, the pita, the bread, whatever you feel comfortable with. It could be gluten-free, whatever. And uh, we are going to take communion at the end of the experience and believing for incredible strength to come to your faith, but continuing to believe that as we commune with God in the communion, that we're growing deeper root systems in our relationship with him. So this is the goal. The goal isn't, you know, asking for things, although that, you know, we want to break through, want to believe that as he broke through on the cross, which is why we celebrate communion. It's his breakthrough on the cross. It's his breakthrough in the resurrection. That's why we celebrate. That's why we remember. We bring him back to the forefront of our focus. That's There's power in that. And so although the focus isn't always just, God, what my laundry list of what I'm believing for, ultimately we want to grow our root systems deeper with God. But at the same time, I will and we are going to pray at the end for things that just are on your heart, things that maybe are standing in the way. Before we, we started today, I was praying, asking God what he wanted to say. And I saw like walls breaking down, walls moving. And they actually, they didn't break necessarily, but they they moved out of the way. And I feel like some of the walls that we've had uh, in this la- these la- this last season, or maybe walls that we have in this current season, I believe in moments like these is when the walls begin to move, the 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 boundary lines begin to move, things that once limited us begin to move, and I'm praying for some of those limits and walls to break or or move out of the way on your behalf in on on this Sunday today as we take communion. So get ready. Uh, But like I said, ultimately, we want to just focus on Jesus, make him the center of our affection. And as we commune in the communion with him, we just trust that we're going to grow in a greater relationship with him. Luke 18, 8, I kind of said this last week. I'm going to do a little bit of a recap and then dive into the, 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 the script, the passage for today. Luke 18, verse 8, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? in the earth. This is a question that I believe God is always asking of us. When I return, will I find faith in you? And we talked about this last week about how a thankful heart, tying in thankfulness to the act of communion. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus said he gave thanks. Paul recounts the story. We'll read that later on. But, um, you know, thankfulness being the fruit and faith being the root. I think if you want to know if you have faith, just ask yourself, am I thankful? I believe thankfulness is the fruit and faith is the root. And so God is asking us, am I, am I going to find faith? And really what he wants to see is, is there the fruit of thankfulness on your tree? Are you in gratitude? Can you see anything around you right now to be thankful for? And if you can, I, I, I just believe this. It's a sign that you are in faith, that your faith is intact, that your faith is strong. I'm asking God to do some amazing things today on behalf of our relationship. And I believe at the end, we're going to go somewhere in Jesus' name. I also talked about last week how we approach him is so important. Are we approaching him with an attitude of thankfulness? I asked you the question last week, when you come into a room, what kind of vibe do you give off? What's the presence you carry? Do you approach a scenario or a situation or a circumstance or an environment with an an attitude of gratitude or a thankful heart? When we approach these things, we approach them with faith. When we approach them with faith, we see the fruitfulness of the Holy Spirit manifest in and through our lives. So I want to encourage you to approach this whole season 
with an attitude of thankfulness and watch what takes place. It says in Psalms 95 verse 2, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. We mentioned last week that that word is to die in the Hebrew means adoration or praise. The word for thanksgiving was what I mean. It's to die in the Hebrew and it means adoration and praise translated as a sacrifice of praise. And I was saying that sometimes thanksgiving feels like a sacrifice at times. But faith, like, like faith is, faith is not a feeling. It's a state of being. Because I walk by faith, not by sight, I don't just do what I do by faith because I feel it. I do what I do by faith because I know it to be true. I'm convinced, I'm persuaded by God that even if I don't feel it right now, I can be thankful for who he is. I can be thankful for the breakthrough in my life before it's even there because I live in the state of faith and I'm persuaded by God that he will do it on my behalf. Thanksgiving is an expression of gratitude. Think about what you're thankful for right now, your children, your job, your career, your financial situation, or anything right now. The fact that you have breath. Maybe you can't be thankful for any of those things. Be thankful that you have breath, that you've made it this far. There's enough that we can be thankful for. Now, I want to open up with, that was my little like recap, reminder, you know, and I think there are things that we have to keep being reminded of over and over again. I think Communion is one of the things that, I mean, Paul reminded us to, to keep as part of our life. You see in the book of Acts, the disciples, the apostles broke bread, did communion all the time. Jesus, it was the last main, one of the main last instructions that he let, that he gave his disciples before he went to the cross. It was the big last instruction, in fact. And he said to do this continually. Do this continually. Don't just do it once a month. Don't do it once every quarter. Do it continually. And so I want to open it up. The, out of the passage that we're, I want to read Mark chapter 8, verse 6, says this. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took seven loaves and gave thanks. Once again, we see this, this word, giving thanks. It's power in our thanks. There's power in thanksgiving. He broke the loaves, he broke them, and gave them to his disciples and set before them, and they set them before the multitude. They also had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he said to them, also before them, so they ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Okay, so here we have Jesus feeding over 4,000 people. Now, in this time frame, the men would have been counted. So there's 4,000 men and their families. These are thousands of of people, and all he has is a few loaves, seven loaves to be exact, and um, a few small fish, and he opened the whole miracle up with a state or the fruit of thanksgiving. Remember, thanksgiving is simply the fruit, and faith is the root. Jesus had so much faith in this moment that it manifested in thanking God for the little that he had. He didn't, he didn't ask God for more. He thanked God for the little that he had. This is so key. So if you're taking notes today, write this subject down. There is more than you think. There is more than you think. Thankfulness and multiplication. There's always more than you think. There's more time. There's more health, more relational potential and healing, more financial breakthrough, more that you can do in your life. Even if you feel like you're near the end of your life, there's always more than you think, even when you feel like you have little. Little time, little health, little money. There's always more than you think. And God wants to teach us how to see in the spirit through faith but by, by, but, but by accessing what he has for us and made available to us through thanksgiving. And so a little bit of context of this passage I just read in Mark chapter 8, feeding of the 4,000 plus, okay? If you read in Mark chapter 8, I want you to read along with me, Mark chapter 8, verse 1. It says here, about this time, another large crowd had gathered and the people ran out of food again, because this happened twice. First, you have the 5,000, then you have the 4,000. So these are tens of thousands of people that Jesus is feeding supernaturally along with his disciples. So about this time, another large crowd had gathered and the people ran out of food again. Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They have been here with me for three days and they have nothing left to eat. If I send them home hungry, 
They will faint along the way. That's verse 3. For some of them have come a long distance. Verse 4. His disciples replied, How are we supposed to find enough food to feed them out here in the wilderness? Jesus asked, How much bread do you have? Now, first of all, when Jesus asks a question, it's not because he actually wants an answer. He wants you to search within to see if you can see a little bit below or a couple layers below or deeper than the question that he asked. What he was really saying is, can you see by faith? Can you be thankful for the little that you have to realize there's always more than you think that actually is available? There's always more than enough. Jesus was teaching and reiterating again for a second time to his disciples and for the crowds that part of his nature is that he is El Shaddai. He is the God of more than enough. This is part of him making himself known, making the Father known. Remember, Jesus is one with the Father. So as he is making himself known, he's making the Father known, the nature of the Father known to the people around him. Specifically the disciples in this case, okay? So they said seven loaves, the disciples replied. That's all we have, seven loaves. So Jesus told the people to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. Now, I already read this passage of scripture to you in the beginning. I want to stop there where he says, thanked God for them. Very, very important. Because this brings us back to, again, last week, where we broke down the word Eucharistio. We find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. In Paul's, as he recounts the, the last words of Jesus before the cross, his instructions to his disciples during communion, the act of communion. Okay, it says here, For I received, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, which is the word Eucharistio, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he continues on with the, the blood, okay? His blood represented in the, the wine. This word Eucharistio that's used here is the same word used in Mark chapter 8 to describe what Jesus did with the little, what Jesus did with the seven loaves. With the seven loaves, it wasn't enough to feed 4,000 men and their families. It wasn't enough logically, but because he was Jesus and because he had faith and because he eucharistio the moment, he accessed and unlocked something in the unseen that allowed a miracle to take place. Now, let me just break down once again, because I don't think I can break down this enough. I think if I repeat things, it's good. I mean, we can't just hear something once and expect that we're going to get it. You know, there's Jesus, even with his disciples, after three and a half years, he taught them similar things over and over again, even with similar experiences, and they still didn't get it. And so we could be on repeat until we get the revelation of what I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to get. This word Eucharistio, let me break it down for you in just plain English, means the good and well-meaning favor of God. The good and well-meaning favor of God. So on the night Jesus was betrayed, he acknowledged the good and well-meaning favor of God in that moment. Okay, and it takes, it takes the favor of God. It takes the favor of God to get us through betrayal. It says on the night he was betrayed, he gave thanks. Rewind into Mark chapter 8. Jesus is, you know, walking with his disciples. They don't have enough food to feed 4,000 people. And he decided to acknowledge, instead of acknowledging the lack, he acknowledged the good and well-meaning favor of God through Eucharistio in the moment and something unlocked in the spirit within that bread. I believe it all of a sudden went from not enough to more than enough because he acknowledged God's favor for the miraculous, God's favor and love and kindness in the moment. Now remember, during the second century, the Eucharist, which, which by the way, the word Eucharistio is where we get the word Eucharist from, as I mentioned last week. And uh, the, 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 during the second century, the Eucharist became the generic term for the Lord's Supper. So you've heard it said in many Catholic circles, we're taking part of the Eucharist. It's the Lord's Supper, okay? This act of communion or participating in the Lord's Supper 
is known as a sacrament. And in the, the basic definition of a sacrament to Roman Catholics is it's a right in which God is uniquely active. And I believe this. I believe this as a Protestant, as a born again believer, John 3 verse 3, I believe that God is uniquely active in this act. It's more than just a symbol, like baptism, like I mentioned last week. It's more than just a symbol. Augustine of Hippo defined a Christian sacrament as a visible sign of an invisible reality. And then we we move into in, in what it's called, you know, in Roman Catholic theology, the word transubstantiation, okay, which is, comes from a Latin word, which means the meaning or the, it means to change the essence or inner reality. So although the outside elements don't change when you thank God, the, the, it, the, the, the outside elements, it still looks like wine. It still tastes like wine. The cracker still tastes like a cracker or the bread still tastes like crack bread and it looks like bread. There's something invisible on the inside that you don't see that's supernatural, okay? And I actually believe this with all my heart. The same way that when you give your life to Jesus and become born again, John 3 verse 3, although on the outside you look the same, you feel the same to your friends, you look the same, on the inside you are a new creation, in Christ, according to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, okay? So all old things have passed away, all new, all things have become new, the same way that in Acts chapter 19. And once again, I'm recaptioning a little bit of what I said last week, okay? Just to bring us back up to speed. I cannot say this enough. It's everywhere. This concept of transubstantiation is everywhere in Scripture. Acts chapter 19, where Paul laid his hands on handkerchiefs and aprons, and those handkerchiefs and aprons were brought to the sick and diseased and demon-possessed, and when they touched them, the bodies of those individuals, you read it in Acts 19, it says that Paul was uh, used to, to do extraordinary, unusual miracles. When these ap aprons and handkerchiefs were brought to the sick, they were healed or they were set free. I mean, you can see it in Deuteronomy, the fact that when the the, the the people of Israel walked through the wilderness, they wore the same sandals. It says the sandals did not wear out. Their clothes did not wear out. Even though they were the same clothes on the outside, there was something supernatural on the inside that maybe you couldn't see that allowed it to continue to be useful for all those years. So it's literally everywhere. In the same way, bringing it back to Mark chapter 8, even though there was still seven loaves, Something, the inner essence of those seven loaves, the inner essence of those few fish begin to multiply because something supernatural, God became uniquely active in that moment, uniquely active. There was a miracle that took place because there was favor literally infused into the material, uh, in, into the bread, into the fish. And so we're going to continue on. So in other words, no matter what you see in front of you, how small, how insignificant, it feels impossible. When you can thank God in the midst of the impossible, when you can thank God in the midst of, I have a little, when you can thank God in the midst of, I'm barely making it, but I am making it. When you can thank God when I'm barely getting through you know, this, uh, the studying process because you're in school and you feel like you're going to fail your exam. When you can thank God for the little, I believe you will access the much. You will access divine favor because you're literally inviting his favor. Remember, Eucharistio, the word thanks in this context invites the well, the good and well-meaning favor of God into your situation. So Thanksgiving, I believe this, is connected directly to multiplication. In fact, I believe it releases it. It unlocks it. Jesus spoke over the bread, and although the bread did not change, shape the substance or reality of what was in that bread did, okay? And so and I believe that this miracle, even though it happened twice, this miracle was prophesying about who he was as the bread of life. And we'll get into this in a second because in the Middle East, by the way, bread was essential for everything. It was essential for life. That's why you even see in, in Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread because bread in that culture, in that time was sustenance. It was life. Everything was life. Like for us, I don't know, for me, what's life is chicken and rice. I eat chicken and rice 
literally every day, sometimes twice a day, okay? So that's like life for me. So it depends on culture, but in this culture, in Middle Eastern culture, uh, bread was life. And so people understood this language. So let's go back to uh, Mark, uh, Mark chapter eight. I wanna continue reading and then I'm gonna continue to break down some stuff and we're gonna close and take communion. So he commanded, verse six, so he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground and he took seven loaves and gave Eucharistio, broke them and gave them to his disciples and set before them. And then they set them before the multitude. I love the fact that um, it, 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 the, the miracle, like, and I want to reiterate this, the miracle did not happen before their eyes in the sense of he thanked God and all of a sudden, boom, it was like, like 10,000 loaves of bread. Okay. That's not what happened. Remember, all, he blessed, he thanked God, and then he blessed the loaves. He blessed the little of the, the little of the, that, that they have because thankfulness, thankfulness unlocks multiplication. And it was only as they passed it out by faith. There was still another faith step. There was still another action moment that had to take place where they had to pass out the bread. As they passed out the fish, as they passed out the bread, then it multiplied. It was as they went, as they did it, it multiplied. And that's a good encouragement for us that the power of God is in the as you go. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 10, the Great Commission, as you go, preach saying, and then do these things, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out dem devils, cleanse the leper, freely as you have received, freely give. It's not in the as you stay. The power of God does not rest on as you stay. It's in as you go. As you go, the power of God literally lives within the go of the gospel. When you are out there sharing your faith, this is where the power of God, this is why the power of God, this is where the power of God follows you. Signs and wonders follow those who believe. Believe what? In the power of the go, the go of the gospel, okay? It's so in important that we understand this. And this applies to every area of our life. If we want to see a miracle, a breakthrough, we have to move. We have to step out. If Paul, Peter wanted to walk on the water, he could stay in the boat. He, he, he had to literally get out of the boat and move towards what God was saying. Well, God is calling us continually to break through our own limitations, to break through mindsets. And the only way that we break through mindsets is by taking a step of faith when it feels uncomfortable and realizing that when it feels small and it feels hard, that these are this is the breeding ground for the, the impossible to become possible with God. It's the breeding ground for the miraculous. And so let me just continue reading. So he broke the, 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 the loaves up, gave them to the disciples, set them before, and then they went and passed it out to the multitude. Verse seven, they also had a small, a few small fish. So having blessed them, he said to that set, he said to set them also before them. Verse eight, so they ate and were filled and they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Now, why is it important that there was still leftovers after all this? Because all this is about displaying the nature of who he, who he is as El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. There's always more than you think. He even looked like the disciples that maybe Jesus wasn't prepared. But Jesus representing the Father, because the Father and Jesus were one. He was the exact representation of the Father. You can read it in Hebrews. He was the reflection of the Father. He was reiterating to them that even though they've he's been providing, he's provided for the needs in the moment, there will always be more left over, okay? Very important that we understand this. Now, in John 6's account, if you go to John chapter 6, another account of Jesus feeding the 5,000, okay? Feeding the 5,000 men plus families. All they had in this scenario, this was another version of the account of what happened. Okay, I read to you in Mark 8, the story of the 4,000, okay? And you can read in Mark 6, the story of the uh, 5,000. This is another version of the 5,000, which I didn't read in the beginning. There's, still that, there's no confusion. Fast forward to John chapter 6, and it's John's account of the feeding of the 5,000, and they take a little boy's lunch. Maybe you've heard that term before. They take, this little boy has five barley loaves and two fish. And, uh, you know, the, the context, just so you know, was they, they fed all of these people. Did the same exact miracle, the same exact thing happened, okay? Where the, the food multiplied, there was leftover fragments. That night, okay, he leaves the crowds and he ends up walking on water. 
Jesus has this walk on water experience. The next day he's back, okay? And the same crowd is back who he fed the day before. And there's this interaction where they wanted to see him do a sign. And Jesus responds and says, listen, like you're, you're coming with me, you're interacting with me because of what I can physically do for you because I fed you. But you still have failed to see what the miraculous sign was all about. It was all about realizing that I am more than enough for you, that I am the bread of life, that in me, there's always more than enough. This was the lesson that he was trying to teach, but they failed to see it. Then he says in verse 35 of chapter six, Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Remember, this is where he was bringing this whole thing to. He was trying to reveal and show his disciples, but show the people who he was in his nature. It says in verse 41, that I am the bread that came down from heaven. And people were offended by this. Like, what do you mean you came down from heaven? They were complaining. Isn't this Joseph's son? He says it again in verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. He's reiterating it over and over again. Then he says in verse 53, a very offensive statement, which ties into our communion experience at the end of today's message. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part with me. And, and then he says again in verse 58, I am the true bread that came down from heaven. And you can read it from verse 60 to 70, near the end of chapter 6, a whole bunch of people, even his disciples, they were offended. Some of them left him and walked away with it from him because of all of this. Because of him revealing himself through the miraculous sign of the multiplication of bread through thanksgiving, Revealing himself as the bread of life, the true bread of life, the living bread of life. Comparing it to how manna from heaven, you know, God provided the manna from heaven, but now he is the true bread of heaven. And unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, unless you fully let me into your life, you will have no part with me. And a whole bunch of people were super offended. They walked away from him. This act of communion that we're about to do is a celebration of what he did in both his body, on the cross, in his death, and his resurrection. The act of communion is literally taking part of his flesh and taking part of his blood. Literally drinking his blood and eating his flesh. Now I'm speaking symbolically here. But that's what we're doing as we take and engage in communion. We are engaging with his body. We are communing with his body, his broken body that was broken for our sickness and disease. The Bible says in Isaiah as a prophecy that by his stripes, we will be healed. The stripes meaning the whips on his back, the 39 lashes on his back represented the healing of our body. His body was spilling out blood on a cross, representing his blood to wash away the stain of sin, condemnation, guilt, and shame off of our life. The resurrection of Jesus, of Jesus out of the tomb, resurrecting to new life, to sit at the right hand of the Father, represents the new life that we have been given, raised with him. Ephesians says that we've been raised with him and seated with him in heavenly places. When we understand who Jesus is as the bread of life, give us this day, our daily bread. Yes, give us the provision we need, but ultimately, God, you're my provision. Because the crowds missed it. See, the crowds were after him to show him the signs. Show me the signs. Show me what I must do to perform the signs. And Jesus said, all you got to do is believe. All you got to do is believe, but first realize that you're missing the point. I can provide for you physically, but even more, I want to be what you need spiritually. I want to provide for you spiritually. And this act of communion is not just about like breaking through and believing God for those things that we need physically. Although we always will pray those things and we'll stand together and believe for those things that he's promised us. Ultimately, it's about the spiritual life that we continue to get over and over again by simply bringing Jesus back to the forefront of our focus. Let me read that scripture one, more, one last time uh, before we take communion today and close 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and we had given when he had given Eucharistio, he broke it, which is the word thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember, to remember is to bring Jesus back to the forefront of your focus. We've been doing communion uh, with my kids every night since we started last Sunday every night together. And it's been awesome. It's just continuing to help them understand the value of communing with God in the communion. And every time we go through it, I always ask them the questions like, you know, why do we do this? I want them to always be reminded and remember. They can get annoyed sometimes. I ask the same question every time, but it's like teaching. It's like, you know, we, we can't forget. We need to be reminded. When I read the scripture, even though I read it thousands of times, I need to read it over and over and over and over again to remind myself. I asked my son often, I said, why do we, what happens? What's a good way of explaining what remembering is in this passage, in this specific passage of scripture? What's a good way of of explaining what it means to remember? He says, he always says this to me, because I've used this illustration before, to bring Jesus back into the front seat. Sometimes Jesus is in the trunk of our car or he's even in the back seat of our car, and he, but he's not where he should be in the front seat of our car. And when we remember, pretending our car is like our mindset, our life, our focus, our affection, where our affections, our passions lie, when we remember in the act of communion what Jesus has done in his death, in his body, and on the, on the cross, and by his resurrection, we bring Jesus back into his rightful place in the front seat of our spiritual vehicle called life. And he always, he always says that to me, and I love it, because it's a good way of remembering what we do when we do this act. Verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this is the cup in the new uh, cup of the new covenant in my blood, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's hope you have your elements ready. I hope you have your bread, your, your body, your blood, and let's uh, drink some blood and eat some body today. Yeah, kind of just joking, but that's what we're literally doing. We're, we're engaging the body and we're engaging the blood, reminding ourselves of how good he is. His blood was spilled up for our forgiveness. We've been forgiven past, present, and future. His body was broken so we can be healed and break through in Jesus' name. So when you're ready, when you're ready, just get it, get it out, and we're going to take it together, and then we're going to pray. And we're going to believe, God, number one, that our roots are going to go deeper with him in relationship in this season. And number two, we're going to believe that we're going to break through some walls that are holding us back and limiting us in Jesus' name. So, God, I thank you for who you are. And we just celebrate today um, in communion that we get to commune with you. We get to connect with you as a community. Those that are new watching, maybe they've never said yes to you before. This is an opportunity to say yes, to say, I surrender. I give you my life. God, you, you sent your son to die on a cross because of love. You took on our sin, our shame, so you could eradicate the sin and shame that would plague our lives. And so we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your freedom. We thank you, God, for your forgiveness. We thank you, God, for your liberty in this season of our life. And so we surrender our life to you today. God, we pray for everybody watching right now that whatever it is that they're believing for, impossible things, impossible things. I pray that we would see that impossible thing the way that Jesus saw the loaves and the few fish, that we would see it through the eyes of, we have something to be thankful for. We have something. There's more than we think, more than we realize. I pray God for breakthrough in that specific area today. God, we thank you for the little. We thank you for the little breakthrough that we do have right now. And we just acknowledge your favor. And we pray, God, for just multiplication to happen in those areas. We pray that that impossible thing would become possible. God, we pray that you give us the wisdom to know how to take the next step. 
just like the disciples, they 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 unlocked, they were a part of unlocking a miracle, but then they had to actually pass it out. They had to do something. They had to actually move. And I pray that in this season, God, we would move in the spirit. We would step out in the spirit in Jesus' name and see incredible things take place in Jesus' name. God, I pray for um, areas where we feel limited in our own belief system of ourselves. I feel like there's some people watching and um, you've really struggled in the last season to see yourself any more than the limitations that you grew up having on yourself. You see yourself as someone who's going to continue to fail, as someone who doesn't have what it takes. You have ideas, you have dreams, you have hopes, and yet somehow you can't take that step because you feel like if you do, it's not going to work out for you. It didn't work out for you then, and it won't work for, out for you now. I believe God wants to remove some of those walls off of your life right now. I saw it today, like almost like we, we've we been boxed in, and sometimes the walls just need to come down so we can see what's really out there. We've been boxed in, and all we can see is the box that we put ourselves in. And once the, those walls are removed, we can see beyond the limitation. We can see beyond the boundary that we have set up for ourselves that's stopping us from moving in the direction we're supposed to move in. I just believe in this season, for some of you watching, that's gonna happen to you. You're gonna believe in yourself in a way you've never believed in yourself before. You're gonna see yourself in a way that you've never seen yourself before. And those walls are gonna move in Jesus' name. God, I pray for limitations of sickness and disease to break off of people's lives right now. For those of you watching, someone with um, a skin condition, around the, I feel like it's almost like around your feet. You have a skin condition around your feet. I just pray for healing right now over that skin condition. I pray for healing over that skin condition. God, I pray for areas of tension and just soreness in the body that you'd release, release like just relaxation to those areas right now. Relieve the pain in those areas right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray just for healing and breakthrough in the body of all those watching. I mean, we cannot take communion without praying for healing. We cannot take communion without praying for breakthrough in these areas. Although we're believing for our root systems to go deeper with God, like this is also a part of it too, like I said, over and over again. And so God, we just stand with everybody believing for whatever it is, that God, you would begin to move on their behalf in those areas in Jesus' name. Let them feel an awareness of your presence, an awareness of, of God in the room where they are right now for healing in the body, healing in the emotions, healing in uh, areas where there's maybe mental illness right now in Jesus' name. And God, that you would just blow, like blow our minds in this season, br bring our roots so deep in you that we would get out of this season and look back and say, man, I just, I, I just grew so aware of God's presence. I feel like my friendship with God went to another level. I'm hearing and recognizing his voice at a new level. God, I pray that that would be our testimony. That would be our story in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray that moments like these in communion, we're going to have, I think, one more uh, Sunday like this uh, as we finish out the 21 days. I'd encourage you to be a part, even if you didn't start on, 20, on day one of our 21 day days of communion. Uh, just join us in the middle. Join us at whatever juncture of time and start now for the next 14 days or whatever it is for you. In Jesus' name, I believe that you will not regret it. God bless you, Kingdom Culture. We will see you next week. Wow, Pastor Sean, thank you so much for sharing this message. And there is more than you think. Super encouraged by this message. Super encouraged by this season of thankfulness, mm -hmm. of gratitude that we are walking in as a church. Love their moment of communion, believing for those breakthroughs, partnering with our house to see those testimonies. Guys, if you have a testimony, do send it our, our way. We would love to celebrate mm -hmm. that with you. Uh, also want to encourage, maybe you landed on this channel. You do not know the reason why. Maybe you were impacted by this message, by communion, the essence of Jesus, the body and the blood of Jesus. 
That's the life that Jesus is inviting you in. in. Not a life of religion, but a life of relationship with him where you can give it all to him and he can, he will give you a new life. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So I wanna encourage you, if this is you out there, if you're touched, if you're impacted by this message, if, if you have been uh, doubting if you wanna make a decision or not, today can be your day. So if that's you, repeat this prayer after me saying, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you everything. I ask forgiveness for my sins. I say yes to you. Mm -hmm. I say yes to new life. I want to walk with you in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you made a decision today, please let us know. Yeah. Email us at prayer at kindleculture.ca. We would love to send resources your way and pray with you. Yes, guys, and this is it, right? This, yeah, is, this it. is it. We've for this logged morning. been your host for the morning. I hope you enjoyed as well. I hope you were impacted. I hope if you haven't started the communion challenge yet, that you start from now on. We have been this on 21 days. This is the eighth day. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Praying for you, all of you. Hoping to see you face to face soon. We love you. Wish you a very good week. Bye. Bye.